Hi, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to our Sunday communion here on the Dapper Demons <laughs> channel. What the hell was that? Why did you do that? I don't know. I didn't even know I was going to do that up until about 10 seconds ago, but hey, here we are everybody. Ta-da! Another wonderful Sunday evening together having our dividend communion, right? We, I can't use Jim, can't use dividend happy hour. That's Mr. Ryan Williams' jam. So we're going to be the dividend communion. And I, yeah, thanks, Jim. I appreciate that. Greetings from Canada. I guess I got one of them. I need new shirts. I got my uh, Labatt which, you know, was fancy beer down here when I was a teenager to us. And then I go up to Canada and apparently it's a, it's a lesser beer, but real cool. So we're going to talk about a dividend stock that you should put on your radar. I'll let a few of you filter in here first. And I'm going to do a little show and tell. Yesterday, took my family. We went to two things interesting. We went to the town of St. Charles. I had to make sure I'm still not focused. I got to get rid of this guy, this jerk. The The camera will focus on him. Is it, is it MPW? No, Shamir, it's not. Check this out. There's a store. I didn't even know it existed. You guys know I'm a big horror fan. I love horror. I almost came out wrong. Let me try and enunciate my words. Horror. I'm a big horror fan. So, <laughs> there was a store called... Uh, what was it? Mortal mortal ghouls? Oh my god. I was just talking to my daughter about this. I forgot it. But we're going to do the dividend stuff. But check this out. How freaking cool is this? This is a... Uh, let's see if we'll focus. You son... Look at... There he goes. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Look at that. Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Barnum and Bailey. Greatest show on earth. <laughs> For the first time in 27 years, only at the Dairy Auditorium. Now, you guys, I love it. I love the new iteration of it. So, Ghoulish Mortals. That's what it was called. Ghoul Ghoulish Mortals. Really cool store in St. Charles, Illinois. So, uh, yeah, love it. I'm a big fan. I know you, most of you guys probably aren't horror movie buffs. <laughs> horror. It just sounds like... You might be that other kind of uh, stuff. But anyway, so that was the first thing. The second thing, before we get started, everybody, check this out. I got a hack. It's not the pizza. It's not going to be the Walmart pizza. Uh, pie, sli <laughs> sli pies? pie slice. What's up, Michael? You made it, man. I'm going to show you guys a really cool hack. You know, I've, I'm loving Costco. Uh, we started the portfolio update with a silly little thing. But check this out y'all this is off uh, there's a link to this below this is from the crazy coupon lady shout out to my wife who shared this with me but look at that this shows pizza in the united states so this was carry out price without any coupons and in florida pizza hut checks in at 11 11 and a half cents a square inch domino's nine almost 10 cents a square inch we had same yeah, similar Papa John's, very similar. <laughs> we get to Sam's. Sam's four and a half cents a square inch, but the one that takes the cake. Look at the top left. Baby, Costco. Net point just under four cents a square inch for the 18 inch pizza. Uh, gotta love it. We had one last night. That was our dinner. Uh, you know, took the kids to cost. They wanted pizza. We were near a Costco. It was closing time. I didn't realize they closed at a uh, uh, closed early, but uh, I promised also that I know I'm going to make you guys uh, hungry, right? So just remember that. And one of the hacks for Costco, if you don't have a membership, you can get somebody to buy you a gift card, a Costco gift card, and you can use that anywhere in the store. From what I understand, they will let you in. And then the next slide I want to share you because I uh, told John we would share this, and I'd love to know your guys' opinion right now, is uh, is from Fortune, but I couldn't get this to work, so here's another hack. If you take this title, all I did was I copied and pasted this title, and I found it on Yahoo, so you can read it for free on Yahoo. Again, uh, it's in the description below, but John wanted me to share this with you all, 
And yeah, so Jeff Bezos, Leon Black, who was from, I don't remember right now, it just slipped my mind. Um, Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan and the Walton family have all sold $11 billion worth of stock in the month of February. What does it mean? Personally, I don't know. It's never happened before, but that is something that hopefully right as we're all passive income investors when the stock price goes down the yields shoot up so we want to look for those good solid businesses and when the whole market's freaking out that can be the hard thing right is wanting to buy something when everybody else is panicking and selling and it's that herd mentality right the it's the bandwagon effect in reverse where everybody wants to just pile off the bandwagon so you got to know what you're buying but um i love it yes Dude, look at Timothy. He's coming in with the, with the assist. Uh, you know, I shot, the goalie saved it. He came right in and picked it up with uh, for my, you know. But yeah, uh, Apollo Global Management, which Apollo did by Yahoo to tie it in, right? They bought Yahoo off of Verizon. When Verizon, what is Verizon doing with Yahoo? What's AT&T doing with Warner Brothers? And uh, it's, come on. Uh, anyway, so thank you for that. And yeah, um, Okay, I love it, Shamir. I'll drink to that. Some water. Size does matter, even when it comes to pizzas. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I'm glad you shared that because, indeed, we always say, and I kind of told John this, that, which I don't, I don't know if he's in the chat. I didn't see him, but thousands of reasons you could sell a stock. We're potentially going to be selling some stock. We're thinking about it because... We have an issue with our cars. We have a 2011 GMC Acadia Denali with uh, almost 160,000 miles on it. It's starting to pick up more problems. My wife did some research. Turns out those models in the year we have are like money pits. So my uh, oldest just got her driver's license. She's gonna need a car. So we're thinking of uh, selling our Acadia, trading it in, and then um, helping them buy one for my two daughters. But uh, either way, so we're likely going to be selling some stock to do that. We're still, you know, kicking things around. But there you go. There's thousands of reasons you could buy a stock or sell a stock. Thank you, uh, Cody. See, I, this is a problem when you, you're reading these comments. I love you people saying these things, and I'm trying to think of what I'm saying and reading. And anyway, um, there you go, John. Welcome, John. There's your article. Thank you. But yeah, we'll just go through it real quick. And I, I read it and they don't know why. They don't disclose why they sold. We don't know why. So again, we know that you could sell for millions, well, I don't know, millions, but thousands of reasons, but they buy for only one, which is why we were adding agree realty. So all right, without further ado, you guys, you guys came here for the stock that we're going to talk about and a little bit of preface on this one it is a you can tell like <laughs> i forgot to pull up the simply safe on it this is one of the things and it's almost in the vein of peter lynch right when he says to buy what you know but i think what it really should be is to use that as a launching point for things that you are aware of things that you use, but obviously, and I love to point out Blockbuster Video. I mean, we, all of us use Blockbuster Video for so long and Reed Hastings, the Netflix CEO, literally almost went hat in hand trying to sell uh, Netflix to Blockbuster for pennies on the dollar and Blockbuster, they, they were just, they laughed him out of the door. They're like, why are we gonna buy something that's gonna be gone in a couple of years? Like what? DVDs through the mail? Come on. We got stores on every corner in America here. Forget, you know. And dude, that ignited. What's up, Doc? Doc's in the house. That ignited a fire under Reed Hastings. He's like, these are my MFers. I'm putting you under, I'm putting you out of business. And he uh he did it. Um yeah, so with that being the preface to this stack, we I work as a uh commercial loading dock equipment. I do a lot of installations, a lot of welding, uh, sometimes too much well, I get tired of it. Uh, welding, say uh, service, some sales on the side, a uh, little bit, installation, maintenance, things like that. We do a lot of work for the United States Post Office and some of the calls come through 
a business called MCOR, ticker E-M-E. And when this happened, actually Friday night, uh, twice this week, I got a post office call. And of course, we have to call in a number because the post office will call MCOR and say, hey, we got this issue. And then MCOR contracts us to come out and take care of the problem. So they're kind of like the liaison between, um, you know, they, they take care of the, the building maintenance, the facility service like that, uh, kind of like a, a general contractor or subcontractor. And then they sub subcontract work, uh, specialized work to us. But either way, um, now this isn't going to be for everybody. And I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about this. But it is MCOR, and uh, on their, uh, let me share this, they got a little bit of a Vigia on there. Sorry for the streamception. So we'll see if I can play this and you can hear this. It's it's a 18 second video. It's really quick. It gives, uh, let's see if I can do that. So it'll show... <laughs> So there you go. That's what they uh, that's what they do. They do construction service, building service, industrial service. The best way to try and explain it is they are infrastructure builders. They're behind the scenes. Uh, I listen to their earnings call. They are involved in all the stuff we hear about: EVs, you know, battery plants, data centers, semiconductors, hospitals. <laughs> They do HVAC for all these places. They are very, very ingrained. So very interesting business that uh, MCOR does. Uh, again, if you go on their website, uh, click on the earnings call, they have a bunch of slides and whatnot. But I'm just going to, I want to get through this quick. So I'm going to show you the, uh, now this is, I know a lot of you are going to scoff at this. You're going to see the dividend yield of 0.23%, right? And, oops, <laughs> sorry. Uh, one second. Un momento, por favor. Necesito un uh, trae de agua. I think I slipped in a wrong word there. But either way, 0.23% yield. Now, keep in mind, this is something that's pretty new. And I wanted to share it with you people out there. <laughs> because I thought it looked interesting. This is a low yield. They're going to grow it quick, but a very strong business, as you will see. Like, yeah, $319 a share, but uh, let's see. I think it said they were, yeah, they were incorporated in 1987, but there's the dividend growth right there. They cut it during the pandemic. Obviously, things were shutting down. They've had a couple cuts there, one back uh, coming out of the great financial collapse. Uh, they were flat for a lot of years. So as a dividend growth stock, you know, it looks like now they are, obviously, you can see they uh, went way above where they were before, but obviously 72 cents a share. They're probably getting ready to raise again here because they're, uh, you know, about 18 cents. They had raised it in January of 23. But w really quickly, these numbers here, I'll show you. Uh, free cash flow payout ratio, 8%. That's absurdly low. Their earnings per share, free cash flow per share, just really big up into the right. Uh, they're getting money from projects. Remember a lot of these semiconductor facilities that need to be built, MCOR is getting part of that. They're doing the building. Uh, look at sales growth, really nice, 13%, 12%. Shares outstanding, it's, it essentially almost looks like they're taking themselves private, 47 million shares outstanding. Sales again, up into the right. Return on equity has always been mid-teens. Well, all right, 11, 12% 10 years ago, but lately mid-teens except for 20, 27%. High numbers, 28% return on invested capital. Uh, free cash flow margin, yeah, only 6%. So these could be a little bit better. And then again, they have no net debt uh, the last 12 months. And they have $66.18 of operating income to cover every $1 of interest expense. So that's just a super, super quick... Uh, introduction to a 15 billion dollar large cap company and i don't think they showed their price range 
Um, you know, one more thing, guys. Let me do this, and then we can. Uh, I'll hop. I'll hop back to hear what you say. But uh, I should. I was gonna set this up on Alpha Spread. Um, yeah, I don't pay for it anymore. But you get every week, I think, or day or other day, you get uh, free. Let's see what they say. So I got three of them. Uh, we'll see what Alpha Spread says, and then I'll pop back on to all y'all. So there you go. They're showing an intrinsic value of 234 bucks in the base case. So they're saying it's probably 27% overvalued. So uh, this would be something solid company to put on your radar. And if we get a big market pullback uh, crash, and yeah, here we go. I wanted to see the balance sheet decomposition. Yeah, liabilities, uh, long-term debt. So long-term debt, 2.8 million and uh, cash 789 million so obviously they have no net debt and you like to see that but yeah this is alphaspread.com uh, they have uh, let's see if they have their competitors here and there's been no insider buying lately which yeah that's not a make or break but uh, just something interesting to think about so there you go everybody that was hopefully not too long too painful um <laughs> I'm going to see what you guys say now. So let me know what you think about MCOR. Does it look like anything you would ever be interested in? I'd like to know. So I'm going to blow through these real quick here. I will be on with Kevin Burgess tomorrow night, God willing. All things going according to plan. So I will be with Mr. Kevin Burgess. Steve's drinking his Frosted Flakes. I hope you're okay, buddy, doing that. I don't know how you do, I mean, I'm assuming you're being a little hyper, not hyperbaric, hyperbolic. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you put them in a blender, you blend that and drink it. I'd like to know. Shout out to Shamir drinking the Coke Zero out there. And yes, Michael finally made it. Nice to see you, man. Look at you looking dapper down there in your avatar picture. This is fun. Um, so we'll do news. Let me know anything you guys want to look at. What do you want to... Pizza Hut is expensive. I don't know about the stock. They are... Aren't they Restaurant Brands International? Or are they Darden? I think they're... No, I think they're Restaurant Brands International. I believe. Yeah, man. So Puck Man down there in Florida, I think you are right. This is one that is just... It kills me because I was talking to Ryan and Harris a while ago when I remember telling them, feels really expensive here i'm gonna wait for it to come down a little bit and here we are 750 dollars a share so that was just a brilliant move on my part brilliant brilliant move uh shamir you're right talking about that article that john shared see we had a action-packed episode it is um it is tax season that could be a reason people sell although I would assume that a lot of these CEOs are way, way up on the uh, cost basis uh, over there. And yeah, so if anyone else share your thoughts, we could be too get there. Yeah, you know what, Michael? I, that's an interesting thought that we are in the 97th percentile, right? But you also have to remember that what are we driven by? Like the Mag 7, yeah? So it's information we're in a new age we're in a capital light for some of these big businesses so it is kind of different like they're not very capital intensive businesses so uh, if that's the case then when the rates go up some of these businesses aren't going to be affected like an at&t or a verizon or a realty income or a duke energy businesses like that that are very capital intensive they borrow a lot of money so the cost of capital goes up the interest on what they owe, uh, if it's floating, if it's variable, that's going to go up or they're going to have to refinance higher. So, yeah, it's it's almost a just a new, you know, so I agree that like, yeah, we are in the 97th percentile. So it would feel like a crash is coming or something should be pulling back. But um, yeah, I don't know. And yeah, it's 11 billion, John. But to me, that's almost timing the market because, again, you know, we see people, investors, CEOs, everybody selling for thousands of reasons, and uh, they're only going to buy that one. Great point, Timothy. Yeah, Bezos has a lot of projects, so 
who knows, right? Elon had to sell a bunch to buy Twitter, which was absolutely uh, terrible. That's fine, Jim. Yeah, everybody had their first cars, except these kids nowadays. We've seen some parents where they're like, you know, oh, I'm going to get my daughter a 2023 BMW. Uh, what? I'm like, whoa, what? My first car in 1994 was an 86 Buick Skyhawk poop brown. It was just awful. But you know what? It had the windows worked. It was a car. <laughs> it had uh, HV uh, AC in it. Is that right? HVAC? Didn't sound right. But yeah, I didn't care. I was 16. And the girls always wanted rides, which I told my wife. I loved it. Welding is like staring <laughs> candle in a closet. Yeah, it can feel like that. Um, yeah, I do a lot of welding. So, Rob, what's up, man? Nice to see you. Finally made it here. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Nobody has ever told me I look like Fred Gwynn, but I will take it because as a horror movie fan, uh, which isn't really a horror movie, but Fred Gwynn, everybody, not only the judge from My Cousin Vinny, but he was the one, the only, the OG, Herman Munster. Gotta love him, man. Oh, Rush. Dude, you know the funny thing? Uh, we work at a, a facility called Aaron Thomas and they are a subcontractor of PepsiCo, like Frito-Lay. And they'll, I've told you guys this, they'll bring in boxes of the, the snack-sized potato chips and they build those boxes. So when it's Halloween time and you see the Halloween box and it has three Cool Ranch, three Doritos, three Smart Pop, uh, three Funyuns and three of something else, they're the ones that they have a, a big group of people. And I don't know. Is it wrong? I'll say that it reminds me, I feel, because I'm 6'4", and it's mostly Mexican people that work here, so sometimes it's like a shift change, and I'll be walking, and I swear to God, 98% of the, the people that work there don't even come up to my shoulders, so I, I kind of do feel like uh, some bizarre, you know, offshoot of uh, Willy Wonka and the Frito-Lay factory, you know, but... <laughs> Yeah, you know what, Matt, it can be boring, but I go all over the place, so I'm not in the same spot, and I always got something in my ear. Uh, Shamir, any bear porn? I guess not any bear porn. I mean, I'm sure we could we could think about something, but Lincoln, and Link, Lincoln Electric, ticker L-E-C-O, is another one that I should look into because I do use their welding rods, the predominantly the 532nd 7014 rod. There you go. And <laughs> uh, if buying off is, please buy the correct. Oh, that's interesting. EMKR. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, honestly, and it's just one that I, I have a feeling a lot of you guys aren't going to like it because the low yield, and I've, I've made this mistake. So let me know if you've made this mistake and with which one, because for me, it was Costco, Visa are the two big ones that come to mind where I saw their starting yields and I was like, please Costco at $350 a share in a, you know, less than 1% yield or whatever. I'm going to go and buy Verizon and AT&T. And my God, that was just not the right move. We live, we learn, you know, like Charlie always says, the, you have to keep learning if you want to win. So that's what we are trying to do yeah he doesn't like the yield it's all green it's a solid business so thanks for sharing that jim uh, m core ticker eme i mean again and this is something that i've been learning to adapt and evolve with as looking at total return and again just because they pay a small dividend doesn't make them something you should ignore because a lot of these businesses that are paying the smaller dividend they're able to plow back a lot of that retained earnings into the business and grow the business. And, you know, like Warren, that's why they won't pay a dividend over there at Berkshire Hathaway is because they want you to decide, the investor, when you want to sell because it's very tax efficient that way. So that's, you know, because you can just sell off little bits of shares. You don't have to sell the whole thing. Um, you know, if you were to get, like he would say, maybe you would get a 2% dividend yield if they paid one. But if they reinvest the money, 
they might be able to give you, you know, 3% growth on that or more or greater. Uh, that's always their litmus test is if they can't, you know, turn a, a retained dollar into more than a dollar of net present value, then they're not going to pay the dividend because they're doing you a great service. And then it's up to you when you want to sell. So uh, Dover, McKesson and CC, is that Carnival Cruise Lines? I don't know, man. I haven't looked at them. Is MKC McKesson or McCormick? Dover, so Dover is headquartered in Downers Grove, Illinois, near where I am. They do refrigeration units. It's it's piss poor, <laughs> their dividend growth. Yeah, they're a dividend king, and I, I think they may be the longest streak of the dividend kings. Don't quote me on that, but it's just, my, here, I'll show you. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, why you got to watch some of these. And then we'll do news, so... Uh, st stand by you guys because I'm going to show you this uh, and then we'll do the news because I know some of you really want to see that. So uh, from what I remember, Dover's, there it is, dividend growth, 1%. One, 1%. Yeah, the yield's uh, 1.22. So let's see what, uh, they were found in like the 30s, I think. 47, headquartered in Downers Grove, Illinois. Yeah, look at their dividend growth, 7% 20-year CAGR. Okay, that's all right, but 1% the last five years and 1%. It's just, yeah, 68-year dividend growth streak. There it is. They're raising it half a penny every every year. I mean, I guess. Um, yeah, there's, there doesn't move. They're, of course, at the upper end, like most stuff, of their 52-week price range. And... Yeah, just real quick, free cash flow payout rate of 25%. They'll be able to grow that forever. Let me just see what their um, sales growth a little down. Shares outstanding, $141 million. So that's, uh, and let's see their debt. Sorry, turn on equity. Yeah, so this this is a good clue to see that, to think that a business is solid and going to grow. When you see these consistently high mid-teens or better return on equity and return on invested capital, you just, it's almost it's almost a no brainer that they're going to keep growing the business and increasing shareholder value. Uh, and then we were doing to do, <laughs> how about you form your words there, buddy? Latest. This is what I'm going to share with you guys going down to the 26th. Cause that was Monday. Here we are. Everybody. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. Uh, West Lake chemical partners. They refresh their, uh, Dividend safety score 40 on safe. And Cummins, I guess they're splitting off, splitting off Atmos filtration. And make sure I'm there. Okay. Sorry. I didn't have my phone on. I know. I'm old, I'm an old school fuddy duddy, right? Uh, <laughs> Cummins, anyway. Uh, dividend safety score of 98. Once upon a time, I used to work for them. Uh, or subcontracted for them. Not worked for them, but did work for them as a subcontractor. Very interesting. Over in... McCook, Illinois, they have a big uh, building out there. So they're spinning off the multi-utility down there in Texas and California. Sampra, Sampra Energy grew their dividend 4.2%. It's their 14th raise. Uh, Fidelity National. I, now, we went to the Brookfield Zoo today. And, of course, I you know, my kids are older. They're teenagers with the other teenager cousins they got. And I had a dividend talk <laughs> podcast in my one year in my good ear. And uh, yeah, they talked about this uh, Fidelity National. So they did a sneaky thing where this dividend growth, negative 31%, apparently they didn't tell anyone or they tried to sneak it or under that it wasn't a cut. They just didn't post what the dividend before was. And then they just said, here's the dividend now. And it was 31% less than before. So uh, I don't know what's up with them. I've never really looked in them. But if you do, look at that. Another business, industrial gases. We, I don't think we get our cylinders like our oxygen and acetylene from uh, Lind and our propane. But anyway, 9% gross. That's 9% dividend hike. That's their 31st year of growth. Let me know if you own Lind. Uh, Simon Property Group got a dividend upgrade from 50 to 60, the upper tier of the borderline safe score because their recovery strengthened uh, or their what no the occupants recovery strengthened 
TJ Maxx, it is indeed like a treasure hunt. I love how they put that. Never know what you're going to... It's like a fancy schmancy Goodwill, yeah? 13% dividend raise for TJ Maxx. Best Buy here. They downgraded them from 70 safe to 60. Borderline safe uh, because they say that they... Uh, it doesn't make sense. Their payout ratio to remain above target longer than expected as electronics demand softens. And there you go. Best Buy. Raise the dividend. 2.2%. A couple more. Eaton. This is one that uh, I too bad I didn't go heavy into them. Again, they're in my field. I see their name all over the electrical components, breaker boxes, transformers, all these kind of things. Uh, dividend safety score of 85, very safe. Solid company. And uh, I think I sold them at 171-ish and I think they're pushing 280 now. Yuck, my fault. <laughs> we didn't lose money, right? So uh, Old Republic, property and casualty insurance business. Uh, dividend raise 8.2%, 43rd straight year of increasing payouts, and two more here. This was interesting. Maybe I'll do a video or something on it, but uh, Ultra having issues with uh, cigarettes declining. Cigarettes make up 85% of their revenue, so they reaffirmed the uh, borderline safety score. What are you guys doing with Altria? Let me know. Uh, and last two, Dominion reaffirm their score of 70 apparently they're not going to be growing the dividend they're going to freeze it for several years and lastly principal financial they reaffirmed their uh, outlook or refreshed their outlook of 72 safe so my goodness <laughs> that is that so we got you the dover and let's see shamir oh that's right uh we were talking about pizza hut yum brands owns pizza hut I should have known that. Fun fact, everybody. So Yum! Brands was spun out of PepsiCo, I believe in the late 90s. And with that was KFC, Pizza Hut, and... Oh, I can't think of... A Taco Bell. I think there was one more, smaller one. But those are the three big ones. Now, fun fact. Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut will only ever have PepsiCo products because that was part of the agreement they signed a lifetime agreement that only PepsiCo products can be sold in Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and KFC. So next time you're in one of those and you see PepsiCo products, now you'll know. And what do they say? <laughs> Knowing is half the battle. That's right. Good. Pizza Hut is yum. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Leggett and Platt. Interesting leg is a good one. I assume you're talking about leg and plat. A lot of problems right now with uh, headwinds. People aren't really buying that much furniture. And I think it's in their bedding segment that's done the most damage. That's a... Shamir, do you remember we talked about that once? There's a pizza dividend stock. I looked at once up there in Canada. Is it... Pizza 73 or something like that. It reminded me of Little Caesars. I'd like to know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sir John Templeton, right? The old famous investor. He used to say that uh, a good time to sell is when there's extreme optimism and a good time to buy is when there's extreme pessimism. That kind of sounds like a little uh, thing I heard from another investor in Omaha of, uh, you know, buy when... Uh, be greedy when everyone's fearful and fearful when everyone's greedy. But, hey, you know, I don't know how that worked out for the people that were greedy when everyone was fearful of Enron, right? Probably not too well. Prediction for the S&P after the election? No idea. None whatsoever. Not going to bother me. You know, just thinking about the businesses. Uh, macro is always going to be crazy. Something always going on with the macro world, but... <laughs> we uh yeah honestly just focus on the businesses as i would think but i don't know man i don't know what happens i know some people i've heard conspiracy theories they think that if biden wins then they're gonna remove him on mental health grounds so then yeah harris will be president i don't know so interesting you say that charles um I, I set that up to do an ad every 24 minutes. 
I figure, you know what? I mean, it's not that bad, right? It's what, five seconds, hit click. I mean, I get a few bucks from this. Honestly, if you guys really want to know, my February, yeah, because I just got it, the February payment, I think was like $169 from all the stuff I do here, which is just, at my job, if I work, what, an hour and a half maybe of overtime, I'm getting more than that. And I'm going to tell you what, I put a whole hell of a lot more than an hour and a half into this. So this is a hobby, labor of love thing. You know, I'm cl I'm clearly not doing this for the money. I really love talking to you, uh, you people. Got to stop saying that. Doesn't sound right. You people. So, uh, yeah, I w on this end, we can set the ads. We can let YouTube do it. You can pick conservative. You can pick aggressive or low or uh, different interview intervals. And one of them is 24. I figure that's two ads. Did he say figure? I thought there was a U inside of figure. Figure, which also I used to say reality. It's realty. Uh, I, I used to say, well, I still say Berkshire and it's Berkshire. I'm working on it, people. I'm working on it. And the other one that well, I was really bad on was subsidiary, which is subsidiary. So I got to get my brain tricked on that. Uh, oh, Chemors, they're, um, uh, they came up on a screen once. Yeah. Yep. You're right, Shamir. 3M. What are you guys doing with 3M? One cent. They've been raising it for a penny for a while. They are just doing that. Matt, ARLP. I'm almost caught up with you with all y'all. So let's look at ARLP and see what kind of bucket of yuck this is. No no offense, Matt. Uh, just, just me being funny. Let me remember that. ARLP. And away we go, everybody. This request is coming from Matt Bittner, who wants us to look at ARLP, Alliance Resource Partners. <laughs> Casey Kasem. I know Jim Betts. You'll remember Casey Kasem. I remember hearing Casey, Casey Kasem. Energy, coal, and consumable fuels. Well, there you go. Now, there's a prevailing thought. The higher the yield, the worse the company. It depends. Take it with a grain of salt. But dividend safety score of 40 unsafe. Having never looked into this company, they are oh, Illinois Basin Cooperations. Okay. Yeah, they were founded 1971. And during the recession, they increased the dividend. That's good. But then they cut it going into the pandemic. So, yeah, interesting. That's kind of a crazy chart there that they pandemic cut but they they already started cutting before the pandemic so uh, but there looks like back up to almost all-time highs on that dividend yield from what i can tell they missed a raise they forgot as my guy mike the, the dividend guy would say oh they forgot to raise the div i can't do a canadian accent uh, they forgot to raise the dividend and yeah yeah i don't know man it's uh eh I would just rather go with an enterprise products partner, something I, I can, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. So it's an MLP. So you look at the distributed cash flow uh, payout ratio. It's low enough. They can cover it. But yeah, let me look at their DCF per share. Look at that. It's nothing in 1920. You know, man, I don't know. I, this feels a little bit like a yield chase to me. Um yeah, if you want to do it, they've they haven't bought back any shares. Only 127 million outstanding, but yeah, really nice return on equity. So that tells me what are they? Must be a really capital intensive business. I I don't. Anybody have an opinion on on this? I know I'm going quick here, but they don't have a lot of debt. Ah, uh, you know what, Matt? I I guess it looks okay. Maybe looking at like the interest coverage and whatnot they're kind of probably over earning a little bit but i don't know i don't think this would be for me I, i'd have to dig into them a bit more but yeah look at their dcf per share that was really low and then obviously we've had most of the oil companies have been doing well so um i don't know it looks okay it looks okay i would say you need to do a bit bit digger <laughs> a bit a bit of a bigger dig 
into this business. My word, huh? Uh, thoughts on O long term? Gonna be okay long term. And, you know, it's. So, how can I put this? When the rates went up, businesses that, again, have a lot tied to debt that <laughs> makes cost of capital more expensive, that really put a hurting on in the REITs. It's what, if you look at VNQ, which is the REIT ETF from Vanguard, as far as I know, just about all the REITs, I mean, I, you can't paint with a broad brush, but most of the REITs I look at are way down. They've been hurt, but also their bond proxies, a lot of income investors, people that don't really want to take big risk, right? Real estate is usually safer, but any individual stock is risky, right? So when bond yields, right, the treasuries were up around 5% almost, uh, it just sucks away a lot of capital. A lot of investors get sucked away from what traditionally during the low yield. Because think about that. When rates were cut to zero and held there for an ungodly long period of time, that was abnormal. So there was people that were starving for yield. There were investors that were starved for yield. So they put a lot of money into a lot of the REITs. And then you saw what happened. Rates went up and almost exactly in lockstep, money started pouring out of a lot of the REITs. So retail REITs have been hit hard. Uh, Simon Property Group, though, they're up nice. They're, uh, they haven't been hit that bad. So that's interesting. But I think long term, eventually, it's a good opportunity. This is why we've been buying. We're up to 200 shares of realty income now. When rates get cut, my opinion, as things stand today, they will start to fly back upwards. And I would expect to see realty income in the low to mid 70s at some point. But when I don't know. I'm patient. This is one of the beautiful things. We get paid to wait, but uh, we also start a position and agree realty because realty income is getting so damn big. They're having to do bigger and bigger deals. And that's kind of one of the risks is that they're starting to branch out into gaming, into Europe. They're starting to really go heavy into Europe. They bought one of the, I think the third largest uh, doing a deal with Decathlon. So if anyone's in Europe, you know, you'll, you'll know Decathlon Sports, uh, kind of like a Dick Sporting Goods here. And they're just having to do bigger deals to get that, um, to try and move the needle. So anyway, there you go. Uh, I'm going to get caught up to all y'all. Yeah, you sold out of Altria. I'm thinking about it. And it's, <laughs> it's tough because... I don't know. I, I think I might be addicted to Altria because it's funny. I tell my wife, I'm like, we're, we're going to sell out. I can do it. But when I start looking and thinking about hitting the buy button, I'm like, I, I can't do it. I, I'm like, I, I can't do it. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'll, I'll sell them tomorrow. One more day. I'll, you know, it's like uh, when they say St. Augustine when he said, prayed for the Lord to give him chastity, just not yet. I, that's how I feel. It's like, yeah, I think I have. I think everybody. Hi, my name is Russ, and I have an addiction to Altria's dividend yield. So, <laughs> I don't know. John, I haven't shopped at a Best Buy in forever. I used to buy CDs there back in the 90s. A CD-ROM. Mmm, CD-ROM. I like those. Yeah, Best Buy, I can't. They come up on some radar screens every once in a while, but I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Doc's buying Altria. You know what, Doc? I know you're a newer investor and you might, I don't know, this might be something you go through. It's a journey a lot of us take that uh, if we look at a total return basis, if I could go back to 2018, if I could get in that DeLorean and just say, hey, dummy, just, just put everything into Costco. And I would be like, yeah, but the dividend yield is so low. Say, but the total return. Focus on the total return. You're not living off dividends yet. One day, you know, after Costco runs up to $1,000 a share, does a split, and then runs back up, you can sell off that stock when you need income, and it's going to be a lot better. So that, yeah, that's something I'm, li I'm, living to, I'm learning to live with and do is to not chase yield and look for those businesses. So, you know, that's me. Please, Lordy, can we have a... Uh, can we have a uh, pullback here? 
I, I, getting, I gotta get better at this because, yeah, dude, I, this is silly. I, I know from being on the other side, uh, I would pop on Kevin sometimes and Ryan's and I'd ask a question and literally like 90 seconds would go by and be like, son of a bitch, man. I'm like, get to my comment. I just, I've been waiting two minutes and here's me 50 minutes. I don't know. 25 minutes later. I'm like, ah, now I'll get to your comment. So, uh, I do apologize. I'm, I want to get caught up here. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend. I'll be on with Kevin tomorrow night. I really do enjoy being on that side of it too, because I can just, uh, just talk. Uh, I don't have to do all the reading comments, putting them on the screen and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, uh, full position in Altria. We're probably there. Uh, we're, we're really waiting for about $44 a share and the damn thing just is not getting there. So yeah, it's being paid to wait. It was a really interesting article on Simply Safe. Maybe, uh, maybe Kevin and I can talk about it tomorrow night, but yeah, it's just cigarette sales are declining. It's 85% of their business. Uh, Altria has raised prices four times last year on the cigarettes. And so cigarette sales are declining, but the, the NGP, the next generation products, like the, uh, the less harmful, meaning like nicotine pouches, uh, the vape, you know, stuff like that, the heat, not burn IQOS, those things are starting to, to grow and catch on, but will it be enough I, to replace the cigarette sales? You know, I don't know. Uh, legislation is potentially coming down the pike, how much nicotine can be in these products. So it's just, it's, it's a, it's a dying industry, but kind of shifting to, and we don't know what the shift is going to look like. <clears throat> so they might have to make more acquisitions. They bought, um, Jewel, right? For was it 36, 46 billion, 36 billion. And they wrote it down to $250 million or something, which was like a 98% loss. Just awful, awful. And then they got in uh, Enjoy, which has the first, what, Fed approved uh, vape, right? So it's already approved. So they kind of learned their lesson. They paid two and a half billion for that. So, yeah. I know I say you people Berkshire, isn't it though? You know, I love my guy, Darth Dividend. Uh, I, I challenge you go, go watch one of his videos and he says reality. And I, I only know that. And I say that out of love because I used to say reality. And that's somebody whose grandfather that raised them was in real estate, real estate, real estate. But yeah, the thing with reality, there's, there's no I in the word. It's real T realty. So uh, Cody, Cody, he's out here in this uh, area too, but oh yeah, dude, uh, this is a shout out to Seinfeld. I don't know how old you are, Shamir, but you guys are making me, uh, I love it. I love it. Festivus is beautiful. I miss Seinfeld. He went out on top. You know why Jerry Seinfeld did that? He took it out on top because he said the only way you know when you're at the top or you were at the top as when you go down from the top and you're not there any longer, you look up and say, oh, I was at the top. So he may have been able to go higher, but he felt like he was at the top. And that was, he was like, I'm going out on top. That's it. I don't want this to become, uh, we'll just live on forever in perpetuity in uh, syndication. So yes, uh, Steve, they have a K1 ARLC. So that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know if it's dangerously with uh, 3M. They're going to be struggling for until the, the forever chemical lawsuits, the earplug litigation, until that stuff's all sorted out. They're clearly trying to preserve capital, fortify the balance sheet, while also keeping on their dividend king status and giving those dividend raises. But, uh, you know, again, on dividend talk, by the way, if you don't listen to the dividend talk, you gotta. They got that European flavor. Uh, my guy, EDGI, who's been on this program, uh, like he, he mentioned GE, how GE cut the dividend to a penny so they could just say they've been paying dividends for 100 years one day. And uh, yeah, you guys remember, Kate. Jim, I see you, you had to take it back further. Wolfman Jack, you are an old fart, aren't you? <laughs> Travis, I did buy Vici. I bought one share in the month of February. That's another one. I, I'm always inclined to say Febya, February, but uh, there's an R in there. 
How does an R make the ya sound? I don't know. People around here say it does, so. The, uh, they did a deal with... Um, at, uh, what? <laughs> Can you see the smoke coming out of my ears? Come on, everybody, help me out. I'm sure somebody answered it. What's the... Uh, What's the, the main dividend? D uh, DLR, Digital Realty Trust. They did a deal with DLR. So yeah, always trying to get into the data centers too, which, hey, by the way, MCOR, they're tied into the to the uh, data centers. No, so O spun off o, uh, Orion Office Properties, ticker ONL, if you remember, they spun off that ahead of this whole thing. So I don't know if it was just luck or if somebody was really on the ball there, but before WP Carey did it after the fact, uh, oh, spun off all their, op and I called it, I said they shat out what they didn't want, right? They're like, office, we don't want it. So they got rid of those. Uh, I think they have 1% exposure to office space, if I remember correctly. And Vici, no, I don't believe they do have any that I, I'm aware of that I can think off the top of my head. I was waiting for you to say that, Matt, with the PBR. PBR, Petrobras Brazil. That is mostly, doesn't the government mostly own them? People are probably, sorry, I just shaved before I came on. I'm, I'm, I keep wanting to go like this. And my brain's like, stop doing that. They're going to think you're a crackhead. Shout out to, uh, what was his name? The crackhead, um, Dave Chappelle. Like dividends, right? He's scratching. He needs a hit of some dividends. Oh, so this is what you did, James. I think you were talking. We were talking about things we've avoided because of the low yield. So uh, I'm assuming Microsoft you might have meant, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm putting words in your mouth. And Trey, there he is. Oh, dude, did you ever get a hold of uh, Jonah? Um, you're right. You're the guy up there in Minneapolis, Minnesota, not Minneapolis. I don't want to say where you are. Oh, look at this. And he's going to be in the Chicagoland area. Nice, man. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're doing. What's going on? I'm always busy as hell, but, uh, I don't know if you're on Twitter, you can shoot me a message. If you're somewhere in the area of where I am, you can swing by and say hi or something. Uh, Yes, Tyrone, Tyrone Biggums. Dude, Dave Chappelle's great. He doesn't care anymore. That's fantastic. Um, what else didn't we cover? I think we covered most of it, right? What are you guys looking at buying this week? Personally, for me, yeah, I, you know, I guess, hey, honestly, these days I'm so focused on investing and I love it. If you would have seen me, circa 2012 to 2017 oh, i was big into libertarian i was raised mostly uh, i don't know what you would call them but republican it was like mindless republican um except for my grandpa he was a democrat him and my mom used to fight but stupid stupid yeah you know, we have so little time one of the big mistakes that human beings make is assuming we have time. You don't know how much time you have. I don't know how much time I have. And I used to see them just argue some heated arguments and it was so bad. I mean, you can't go back and it happens and it's unfortunate, but you know, arguing a, a father and a daughter just screaming at each other over something that neither of them control. And it's like, you. I look back now and I think like, we should have been laughing, doing something to, you know, but I don't know, that's, anyway, so yours truly was a libertarian and I just, I got tired. I got tired of fighting with Republicans and Democrats and I thought, you know what, there's got to be a better, uh, a better way. Anyway, so Shamir, my guy, going to be buying Hershey. They back in the like 185, 186 range, yeah? So that's solid. Uh, definitely a solid business, and I've thought about adding more, but quite honestly, I'm pretty pretty set with uh, PepsiCo. You know, very very similar, not businesses, but they're both in that consumer packaged goods space. Nice that you and Jonah have uh, chatted. You're all both up there. 
Oh, dude, I forgot. You're from uh, Naperville. We got to get something together eventually sometime up in this area. I get, <laughs> I get late. I'm going to admit it. I get lazy. I keep thinking like somebody should set this up. And it's like, you, you're the one that's supposed to set it up, guy. Like, oh, yes. You're, you are literally right down the road from me in, uh, in Naperville. So I don't know. Is there any Iron Mountain investors in the house? That was one I had looked at for a bit. There was something about it that turned me off. I didn't go with it. I know they've done well. Also, shout out IBM. IBM has been doing well. Look at this, Ivan. Which dividend stock is at a good price to buy now? Let's hear what you guys think. In my opinion, uh, Agree Realty, that's one that I've been buying. Uh, I'm going to keep buying it. I followed the lead of Joey Agree. For those of you that just uh, joined in, do the, um, well, we'll show you. I'll show you. So the 75 of you watching, this is a fun site. If you ever want ideas, just go to the, let's see, CEO buys. I think I might have it linked somewhere below, but uh, CEO buys.com real simple. And they're, they're going to want you to subscribe to their service so they can notify you the split second anything happens, but just scroll down to the bottom and then right down here, uh, just click Browse All Buys, and it'll it'll show you uh, exactly. But the beautiful thing, this is when CEOs buy at market prices where there's no options, no bonuses, no gifts. This is with their money that they've bought. And uh, I thought there was an interesting one here. Maybe not. Perigo, we've talked about them before. Um, Enphase, look at their CEOs been buying. Uh, it's just an interesting way because, right, we always say people buy for one reason only. And I, I guess I talked about them. I got to show. Uh, so we'll go to the top there. See, we already had it up. I agree. Realty. Yeah. Last time he bought was 10 days ago. But he's bought on February 20th. This is when it was disclosed. February 23rd, February 16th, December 13th, December 12th, October 3rd. So he's bought over 42,000 shares going back to may 15th of 2023 and it'll show you i blow this up there we go it'll show you how many shares they bought at the price how much they paid and then what that did to their share count so in this it went up almost one percent and then if you scroll to the disclosed on disclosed on click that and it will bring up the sec form four which they have to fill out so you can look at it for yourself and it'll uh, give you the explanation of what they did. So really slick, really nice site with that uh, CEO-buys.com. Um, again, some some buy a lot, some don't. Doesn't It's not a make or break by any stretch of the imagination, but it it can be good to get an idea. And especially in Agree Realty's case, this tells me that in the $50 range, uh, Joey Agree thinks the stock is really undervalued and he is putting his own money where his mouth is. And it's again, it's not it's not the 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 business buying the money, it's him personally buying that stock. So oh nice Mike. Uh I don't do you want to share what restaurant? I'd be curious to know. I mean, I don't know if it matters. I mean, what are you gonna do? Uh, accidentally give them exposure, but yeah, just put that in the chat real quick, man. Uh, and also, uh, shoot me an email, russ at dapperdividends.com. That actually might be a fantastic idea. So I like that. I've had thoughts about doing it in Chicago, but, uh, you know, that can get... Put it perfect perfect thing. I, in the West suburbs, I know some people that will not go to Chicago. Oh, my God. Did you hear that accent? <laughs> What accent? I don't have an accent. What do you say? How do people say? Chicago. Uh, they will not go to Chicago because they're afraid of the violence and crime and whatnot. So they'll go to one of the museums. But it's just like, just zip right to the museum. As soon as you're done with the museum, you go right back home on the expressway. <laughs> you don't do anything in the city. Uh, where where my wife and I, hey, we... Uh, you know, we're silly. We go out, we go dancing, we go bar hopping. Well, I don't care. We're walking around. It's fine. I'm, it's fine until it's not, right? Um, and then Trey, Enphase, 
they were down. I don't think they pay a dividend, right? They had dropped hard and interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know, ma'am. I, I, that is something that I'm also doing and involving as an investor, seeing a business that's solid. And I've said, ah, eh, they don't pay a dividend. I'm going to avoid it. So, you know, I'm just trying to be a better investor and be the best investor that I can be, right? So, yeah, Mike, if you're still listening, dude, shoot me an email. I would love to hear, uh, or next time, I don't know. Maybe I'll find you some way, somehow. And um, yeah, so dude, tomorrow night, I'll be on with Kevin Burgess. You know, I'll be here, he'll be there, we'll be together, we'll be talking with you, bring your questions, comments, concerns, uh, I don't know, whatever, uh, whatever else you want to bring and say to him. But uh, honestly, uh, I really do thank all of you for coming. And I hope to see you again next week. So I love it. Thank you once again. So long, everybody. Pee Wee takes us out. Yeah.